So I have this book here and let's pretend it's written in ancient Greek. Now, obviously that's not a language that I can read, but let's pretend that I have a friend who can. So I can do one of two things. I can either take this book, give it to them, wait for them to translate the whole thing and give it back to me in English. And then I can just start reading it normally. But maybe I don't wanna wait for him to translate the entire book. Another option would be to go, you know, either line by line or page by page and be like, okay, here's this page translate it, give it back to me, I can read it. Take the next page, give it to them, translate it, give it back to me, have me read it. And either direction I go, the end result will be the same with me being able to read the entire book in English. And yes, that was an analogy and that's basically how your computer goes from reading human readable programming code to machine code. A programming language can either be compiled, which is like that first example of giving the entire book, translating it, and then reading it. Or we can do what's called interpreting a language, which is basically that second example of us going line by line and translating it that way. So let's first start with compiled languages. The tool used to compile your language is called a compiler. No surprise there. A compiler takes all your source code, translates it to machine language, which is just ones and zeros or binary. And the output is gonna be an executable that's ready to be run on your machine. And just like in the example, the translation part is gonna be the time consuming part. But once it's fully translated, it's gonna be blazing fast because at that point, the whole thing is just ready to be run on your computer. So this is good for things that need to run very fast. That's why things like game engines and real-time operating systems are written in compiled programming languages. The two most common languages that are compiled are C and C++. All right, let's talk about interpreted languages. Now these are translated using, well, you guessed it, an interpreter. An interpreter goes line by line or statement by statement and translates each line and then executes it. So this is gonna be slower than compiled languages because when you have a compiled language, it's an executable, it's in machine code, the computer can just run it as is. When you have an interpreted language, as the program is running, it's gonna be translating it and executing it, translating it and executing it. So it is slower, but we will be talking about the pros and cons of each one. Common interpreted languages are JavaScript and PHP. All right, so let's talk about the pros and cons. So for compiled languages, the pros are that you only have to provide an executable file in machine code. So you're not gonna have to send your source code to someone, have them compile it and run it. So you're able to keep that private. Like I mentioned, it's gonna be faster because you don't have to wait for every line to be interpreted. It's already translated and ready to go. Also, it is optimized for the specific CPU and operating system you're running on. Now let's talk about the cons. It's not cross-platform. Like I mentioned, the executable is created for a specific operating system or CPU. So if I have a Windows executable, I'm not gonna be able to run that on Mac or Linux. Also, the initial compilation step takes time, whereas an interpreter, you can just start executing your code immediately. For interpreted languages, the pros are that it's portable. We're not sending the machine code over, we're sending the source code, and the machine that's running the code is responsible for getting it into a format it can understand. This is why JavaScript is such a powerful and popular language. When you access a website, all it does is it sends the JavaScript as well as the HTML and CSS over to your browser and your browser has an engine in it with a JavaScript interpreter and the browser is responsible for translating and running the JavaScript code. That way you're not waiting for the code to compile every time you access a web page. All right, cons of interpreted languages. The first is that every machine that runs your code must have the interpreter running on it. If the machine doesn't have that interpreter, can't run your code. Number two is that it's generally slower and it needs to be interpreted every time you run it. With a compiled language, once it's translated into the machine code, you can run it as many times as you want. Interpreted languages have to be interpreted every time you run them. And finally, you have to give your source code to anyone that wants to run your program. So you're essentially making your code public, which is uh, might not be something you wanna do. Before we wrap up the video, there are two very important things that we need to talk about. The first is the concept of a hybrid language. This tries to take the best of both worlds. So it tries to take the speed of having a compiled language, but keep the portability of interpreted languages. So initially what happens is it takes your source code and it compiles it into an intermediate representation, often called an intermediate language or bytecode. And then once you have the bytecode, the machine that's running your code is what takes it from that bytecode to machine language. So now you don't have to give your source code to anyone else. You just compile it down to bytecode and then your bytecode is what you can port to other machines. And then other machines would have to run, have that either an interpreter or some kind of 
virtual machine that takes the bytecode down into machine language. So that's why it's called a hybrid language because I mean, technically the bytecode does get compiled, but it's not compiled all the way down. So you can get very nitpicky if you want, but in this video, it's just to give you a basic understanding, not to deep dive into each of these because there are literally courses dedicated to how compilers and interpreters work. Languages that use the hybrid model are the .NET family like Visual Basic and C Sharp, as well as Java and Kotlin. The last thing that I want to talk about is that there technically isn't a such thing as a compiled language or an interpreted language. These aren't properties of a language. A programming language is just text. It just dictates the logic and the flow of whatever you're trying to do. It's not worried about how it can get translated from human readable code to machine code. So saying a language is a compiled language is technically wrong. For example, C, it's almost always compiled, but you can technically interpret C code. Probably 99% of the time C is compiled, so that's why it is considered a compiled language, but it is important to know that distinction. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you guys hit the like button. If you didn't, you can hit the dislike button, but I can't see it anymore. Also, if you want to connect with other developers, make sure you join the Keep On Coding Discord. It's totally free and we're almost at 10,000 members. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, keep on coding.